Hello and welcome to week three of your Move and Restore yoga classes where we move for the first half and then we restore for the second half. So this week we're going to work a little bit into back bends, very gentle back bends. So we'll be doing back bends for our movement part of the class and then we're going to come into some gentle back bends in the restorative part of the class. So just that the two parts of the class kind of knit together nicely. And um, so what you will need for your restorative, so make sure that you have them close by to you, as always, socks, tops. I know the sun is much brighter today, it certainly is where I am, but you do cool down so you're restorative. So make sure that you have plenty of layers in your body. The props that you will need is just mainly three blankets, but four would be great. It'd be, it's always good to have a spare one to either use as a neck curl or um, to pop over you if you're cold or something. Um, so I think we'll just get straight into it. So you come on to all fours. And just for our first few breaths of our practice, let's just see can we really find our strong foundation. So make sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders, that your knees are directly underneath your hips, and just press your feet and the tops of your legs there into the ground and find the surface underneath you that is supporting you. So you can find just the natural curves of your back. So just we're coming into kind of just the regular curves of your back. We're not coming into cat cow just for these first few breaths. And so you can you trace from your tailbone all the way to the tip of your crown and even in your head, trace those curves. So the dip down of your neck and then comes back up for your upper thoracic and it drops down for your lumbar and curves back again for your sacrum. Always trying to keep the integrity of these lovely curves in our back. We're going to just take it into a few rounds of cat to start warming up the spine and then we'll go through our flows. As usual, like we've been doing the last few weeks, I'm going to talk you through the flows and give you some alignment cues and then we're going to flow through them with the breath. So just a few rounds of cat cow. Inhaling, let the belly drop down. And as we were doing last week, if you remember, we were trying to get have a sense of the tops of the shoulders moving towards the back of our hips. Because as our spine goes into this lovely bow, the two ends of the bone, the, the, the bows come slightly closer together to each other. And that's our inhale. So continue to breathe as I give your line with cues, of course. And then exhale and continue to breathe really slowly drawing our spine up towards the ceiling and working with where it feels comfortable for you. Just remembering that you're just starting your practice. So it doesn't have to be your, your biggest um, cat cow and we're just working gently with the breath. Inhale, the belly drops down towards the ground, that lovely stretch through the collarbones there, the shoulders moving back towards the back of the hips there. Feel that lovely stretch through the front body. So in our back bends through our class today, we'll be having two sensations. We'll be feeling a lovely stretch through the front body and then a strengthening through the back body there as one side stretches and the other side strengthens. Okay, we're going to slow a little bit now. So inhale, the belly comes down and exhale, the spine up towards the ceiling. Really feel those shoulder blades spread across your back here now. And then just start to walk your hands forward. We're going to come into puppy dog. So just to stretch out the back a little bit. You might need to move back a little bit off your mat there. And just let your head come down towards the ground. It might not come down towards the ground completely. If it doesn't come all the way down, just pop your forehead on one of your uh, upper arms there. Quite a strong stretch for the shoulders. Then just inhale, come up a fraction and walk your hands off the side of your mat to the right there. Press that left hip away from you now. Feel that nice bend through the left side of the body. Side bend is one of my favorite movements and really good to practice before you're doing back bends. And they also neutralize twists and things like that as well. And then, sorry, walking your hands now to the left side of your mat. Feel that lovely stretch to the right side of the body now. Press that right hip away from you just for a little bit more of a stretch. And be nice as well now to just drop your forehead onto your left upper arm there. And press into your hands to come up. I'm going to talk you through the next flow now and then we'll go with the breath. So last week we did this idea of, of kind of like a cat and then a pressing back into child's pose. 
but we're not really going to round the spine because we're working with back bends. So this principle of reaching the chest almost forward, broadening through the collarbones in both the movements. So I'll just demo it. So it's inhaling here, let the belly soften, feel the stretch through the front body, and then exhale, the lower back will round a little bit. We're keeping that nice open, openness through the chest here. And you might not come all the way back into your child pose. Upright is what we're thinking. And then inhale to come up, soften the belly down, and then gently exhale, reaching back. One more round. Inhale to come up. Soften the belly down. Feel that lovely stretch to the collarbones. And then exhale, reach the hips back. And then inhaling back up to all fours, you're going to pivot around onto the ball of your right foot. So the right foot comes off the mat. You're going to reach your left leg away from you here. Nice line between the hand, the knee, and the center of the back of that foot there. Reach the left arm up here. And you might even want to reach it overhead just to intensify that side stretch. Then what we're going to do is bring this into a little back bend. So you just, if, if your balance is with you, you pour a little bit more weight into that right hand, lift that left leg up and reach your hand towards it. We're not going to hold on to it. We're just kind of coming into a bow shape here. And we're going to exhale back onto all fours. So I'll just demo on the other side and then we'll slow through the breath. So inhale, broaden through the collarbones, and then exhale into our open chest, child's pose. Inhale, comes back up to all fours, and exhale, pivot the left foot off your mat now, tuck those left toes under. Reach the right leg away, reach the right arm up, maybe even stretch it overhead. Press through that right foot now to anchor you down as you reach through the fingertips, just to give a little bit more of a grounding to the stretch. And then inhale, we're going to lift that right leg up now and reach our hand back towards it. So we're bowing through the back again here. And exhale, bringing everything back down to the mat. Okay, we're going to flow through that with the breath now. So just take one breath for nothing, just to find your nice strong foundation here. Everything grounding down into your hands, skin to spread nice and wide, pressing into the tops of your knees and the tops of your feet. Inhale here, the belly comes down, the face comes slightly forward, forward, but we're not flexing our neck too much, just always remembering the neck through the spine. And then exhale, press those hips back towards your heels, keep the chest nice and open. Inhale, back up to all fours. Exhale to pivot the right foot out to the side, reach that left leg away. Look for the line, just one quick gaze as you reach the arm up and maybe over. Inhale, lift that left leg now, reach the left hand towards it, not holding on to it. More muscle activity when we're literally not engaged or not making the connection. And then exhale, coming back to all fours again. We'll continue, so inhale, the belly comes down. Feel that lovely stretch through the front body, collarbone nice and wide. Exhale, pressing back to your child's pose. Inhale, find your tabletop again. Exhale, pivot, left foot, toes tuck under. Reach that left, right leg away from you now. Reach the right arm up and overhead. Press into that right foot now. Inhale, lift that right leg, reach the hand back towards the right foot, open up into a lovely bow shape, and then exhale, come back to all fours again. And just taking a moment here to take a breath. Let's even come into child's pose. So just with, this, with the knees hip distance apart, place the toes together and just press back towards child's pose. Just keep our nice open chest. So press your hands into the ground, spread your fingertips nice and wide here now. And just feel this lovely stretch in the back, but maintaining that lovely stretch through the front body too. And coming up all fours, tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, and just walking up towards the top of your mat. Exhale, folding down, let the body drape over the feet. Inhale to come up. Exhale, hands through the midline of prayer position. Now I'm just going to come to the side of my mat here, just so you can see me, but you can stay at the top of your mat there. We're going to do a little bit of um, standing stretches and some uh, chair pose sequences. 
Again, we're looking for this lovely strength through our back and feel those muscles all the way down your back contracting to bring your back into a lovely bone shape. What we're doing really is we're trying to cultivate this lovely open chest so that in our life off our mat, which is mostly what we're doing everything on our mat for, that we have this lovely attention to our posture. So even throughout your day, try and bring some of what we're doing today into your day and be aware of your posture. See, are you kind of rolling forward? Sun's shining, much easier to keep the chest open. But when the, when the sun goes down and or we have days where it's a bit cold, it can, we can start coming back into this roll and shoulder version of ourselves. Inhale, reach the arms up high. Exhale, place the left foot behind the right foot and just hinging over to the right hand side. Reach the left fingers up and over and just place the right hand on your right hip there. Inhale to reach both arms up, feet hip distance apart, and then exhale, right leg behind the left leg, reach right arm up and over, feel that lovely bow to the side, stretching through the right side of the body. Inhale to reach both arms up again. And exhale, coming into a chair pose. So basically just bending the knees here. We're gonna place our hands on the top of our knees there. So what we're looking for, if I come sideways to you, we're using our arms nice and straight, so no bend in the elbows there. We're pressing them into our knees and pressing and using them as a splint to help us to really find that back bend here in this pose. Now chair pose is not necessarily a back bend, but today we're looking for a strengthening the spine in this version of our chair pose. So we're kind of tilting the pelvis forward, again as the shoulders move back towards those hip bones there. You can definitely see it a bit more um, on my back in this standing up version of it. Inhale to come up again. We're going to do that one more time. Exhale, left foot behind right foot, reaching the right arm down towards the ground, reaching the left arm up and over. Feel that stretch through the left side of the body. Inhale to reach. Exhale, right foot behind left foot, reach right arm over left foot, left hand down towards the ground. Stretch through the left or right side of the body now. Inhale to reach. Feet hip distance apart now. Exhale, bending the knees. Raising the hands down on the top of your, your knees there. Really strengthen the arms. They're not going to move or bend. Press your hands into your knees. Reach your shoulders up and back towards the back of your hips here. Lift your pelvic floor. So support all this work that you're doing internally in the core there. Lift the pelvic floor. Press into your feet. Press into your big toe mount, your little toe mount and the center at the back of your heels. So have you lifted your center of your back of your heels? Press back into it again. And then inhale to come back up again. Exhale, hands down the midline in prayer position. Okay, we're gonna do another version of that. We're gonna bring the arms into cactus position. This just helps us to stay upright and keep the nice opening through the spine. If at any stage this is a little bit too much for your shoulders, come back to the version with the hands on your knees there. Inhale, reach the arms up high. And then exhale, just bend in the knees any amount. It doesn't really have to be a very deep bend in the knees, just to the point where you start to feel a nice stretch in the back of your, of your calves there. And then exhaling again, bringing the arms out to the side into cactus position. So from the side, you can see again, I'm looking for a nice chest opening and a little bit of strength in the upper back there. We're going to do a few rounds of it. So inhale, reach the arms up. Even though you're reaching, you're still pressing down from your feet there. Find those three points of contact. Big turn out, big turn out. Center the back of your heel. Exhale, bending the elbows out to the side, keeping them in line with the shoulders if you can, coming into that back bend. Press the back of the center of the heel there down into the ground. So you can lift the arches of your feet. Inhale, lengthen one last time. And exhale, elbows out to the side. Remember to bring your hands to your knees. If that's too much into your shoulders. Breathe in. Inhale again one more time. And then exhale, hands down and make line press position. Continue the hands down, bring your hands down to the ground completely. And then just step it back into plank pose. From here, you're going to bring your knees down. And we're coming all the way down to the ground now. Okay, so our peak pose for today is Shalabhasana, so locust pose. We're going to go through a sequence using Shalabhasana and different versions of it just to see how, how it feels 
when you bring your feet mat distance apart, when you bring your feet together, just working on the different muscles throughout the back and the, and the spine and the hips there. Always nice to take sphinx pose first when you're coming into any version of Shalabhasana. It just helps you to lengthen from the belly button all the way up to the top of the, the chest there. So press your forearms into the ground, spread your fingertips nice and wide, find your grounding. What else is grounding? The pelvic bone, the tops of the feet, and maybe a bit of your thighs, the tops of your thighs as well. Press your forearms into the ground here. Reach those shoulders back again. So coming into the back bend before we even start to come into our Shadowasana. We're going to inhale here. And then we're going to exhale and start to peel our belly off the ground. So the knees stay down. We're just stabilizing the core here for one breath. And if you want to stay here, you can um, just stay there or if you want to come a little bit further, tuck the toes under and for one inhale, lifting the knees up. Just finding a good strong core, bring the knees down then. And then we're going to come all the way down to the ground and take a little break. So what we are going to be doing next is the three version, versions of Shalabhasana. So what we're doing there is we're finding our long spine. We're stabilizing the core first. It's always good to make sure that there's a certain amount of stability to the muscles 360 in the core when we're doing particularly any sort of back bends because it, the, the core particularly is the thing that um, keeps our, our spine safe. So, uh, and then we're going to come to our Shalabhasana. So just a demo of the three versions of our Shalabhasana. We're going to take the first one with just our feet lifted and we're going to have our feet mat distance apart. And we leave our head down to this one and lifting the feet up, reaching them away from you. And then we're going to bring the feet down and we lift on the inhale. We're going to bring the feet down and then just placing the hands underneath our forehead, we're just going to lift our head up. And then we're going to bring that down. And then we're going to come into our cactus arm position, or if, it's, if you would prefer, you can reach your fingers back towards your feet, just depending on how your shoulders feel today. We're going to bring our feet this time uh, hip distance apart. So just bring them together and then a little bit apart is the best way to kind of judge hip distance apart because it's hard to see it. And then on your next inhale, lifting up, reaching the feet away from you, finding that nice buoyancy through the, through the uh, collarbones. Breathing here. So noticing how the breath changes when we're placing all the way to our body. On our, on our front body and our, our lungs. And exhale to come down again. Okay, we're going to flow with the breath to that one. Coming up into sphinx pose first, making sure that the elbows is right underneath the shoulders. Breathing here for an inhale. Exhaling, starting to peel the belly up off the ground. Lifting. Inhaling, just for one breath, we're going to lift the knees, stabilize the core. Or at plank, more even. And then bring the knees down on an exhale. Bring the forehead down onto your feet, onto your uh, hands. Bring the feet mat distance apart. And on your next inhale, lift the legs, point the toes away. Bring the feet down on your exhale. Your inhale, lift the forehead up, using your arms to help you. Now exhaling back down on our next one, we're going to inhale everything up. Coming into cactus, the arms lifting, helping to lift the chest up. The feet now are mat distance apart, you're really reaching those toes away. Feel the strength of the whole back body. And then exhale to come down. Okay, we're going to place the flat hands either side of your body, lift up and back into. Tabletop position here, maybe let's take a few rounds of cat cow. And we're going to come into a few standing flows now. Inhaling and exhaling through your cat cow, inhaling as your belly drops and exhaling, lifting your spine up towards the ceiling. We're just going to step our right leg forward now into low lunge. And then on your next inhale, so again, I'm going to explain the flow and then we'll move with the breath. I'll give you a couple of cue, uh, alignment cues on the way before we start moving the breath. So inhale, reach the arms up. So what we're looking here for here again is, is pressing into that front foot and almost reaching the hips back a little bit. 
and then inhale to reach the arms up. Then we're going to exhale and come into cactus position. So this is where we're coming into our bit of the back bend. For this one, because we're reaching the hips back or the, the, the spine back, we're going to let the hips drop down a little bit just to counterbalance what we're doing in the back here. It gives a little bit more space to come into a back bend. Inhale, press into that foot to reach. And then exhale. Inhale, reaching. And exhale. We're going to do a few rounds of that. We're going to tuck the toes under them. Oh no, sorry, we're not. We're going to keep them down. On our next inhale, we're going to reach. And then on our exhale, we're going to place our left hand on our left thigh and reach over to the left side. Inhaling, reaching, and then exhale, twisting to the left. Inhaling one more time. I'm going to bring the hands down and then step it back into all fours. We are going to go through that flow now on the left hand side just to demo it. I'm going to step the left foot forward. Inhaling to come up. Remembering to press into that foot now, to press the hips back. That's how we're going to find that lovely stretch through the front body there. So this is our kind of starting position for the flow. Inhaling here, and then we're going to let the, the hips drop forward to give us space to come into our back bend, practicing the arms there. Inhale to reach, and exhaling into our back bend. Inhale to reach, and exhaling into our back bend. Then we're going to place our right hand on our right leg there, reach the left arm up and over, coming into the side bend on the right side. Inhale to find neutral again, and then exhale, we're going to twist to the right. So these are open twists. And for our next flow, we're going to bring them into the, the closed twist, which is a bit more of a stretch through the body. This is the open version, and then that's the closed version. So just, you can take which version you prefer just, you know, twisting to the side that suits you, whether you want a slightly softer twist or a more intense grip. You stretch away from the open leg for a soft one, you stretch towards the, the open leg for a stronger stretch. Coming back to all fours, and we're going to flow with the breath now. Okay, we're going to inhale, step the right leg forward here. And then inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, let the belly, or let the hips come down a little bit, coming into our back bend. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, let the hips drop down and feel that stretch. Inhale, reach, second time. Exhale, cactusing the arms. Inhale, reach. And exhale, one last time, opening up. Feel that little stretch through the front body, but strengthening through the back body. Inhale, reach. And then this time we are going to bring the right hand towards the back of the left leg. Reach the left arm up and over to the left back corner, so the right back corner of your mat there. Inhale, reaching, and then exhale. We're going to take it into a closed twist, a little bit more intense, so you decide. One more inhale to reach. And then exhale, hands down either side of the front foot and step it back just to all fours. Okay, so for the next round, we're going to bring the left leg forward. So inhale here, exhale, step that left leg forward. Inhale to reach, find that nice square hips, press into that front leg, press the hips back now for this one. And then exhale, cactus the arms, let the hips drop down, feel that lovely bow in the back. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, stretching the front body, strengthening the back body round two. Inhale to reach. Exhale, stretching and strengthening. Inhale to reach. Exhale, this time we're going to bring the left hand to the outside of, or to the back of the left, the right hip there, and reach the right arm up and over to the back left corner of your mat there. Inhale to reach. Exhale, taking a twist. So reaching that left arm back and the right arm forward, really using all the muscles of your core here to twist. Inhale, reach, and then exhale, hands either side of the front foot, stepping it back to downward dog. No, sorry, to all fours. In fact, let's come into downward dog now. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, and finding our way into downward dog. Let's pedal out the feet here, 
Let's bring the feet hip distance apart, or sorry, mat distance apart first. See how that feels. I find it's a little bit easier to find that stretch through the back body with my legs slightly like further apart. Soften your head here. We often keep the head terribly tense in our downward dog. So it's, you just let it hang between your arms there. Your gaze is kind of somewhere between your hands and your feet in the center of your mat there. Bending the right knee, placing the left heel down towards the mat there. And deeply bending left knee, place the, or press the right heel down towards the mat there. And then pressing both heels towards the mat. Bring the feet hip distance apart now, press both heels towards the mat. Notice the difference. Without any judgment, just noticing. So you can you tilt the pelvis forward a little bit. Keeping those natural curves of your spine, even mm -hmm. the downward dog, and that might mean you need to bend your knees a little bit. On your next inhale, we're going to reach that right leg up and back, and exhale, step up just to the inside of your right hand there now. So we're coming into the same kind of sequence, except we're going to be standing this time. Inhale to reach the arm up. Okay, so just a little bit of alignment cue here for this uh, standing version of the high lunge rather than the low lunge. So the same principles apply. We want to hug those hips to the in, um, to the midline. Really hug that right hip in particular to the mid midline. This right hip wants to be dominant. It wants to come forward. We're reaching it back so that both hips are nicely in line with each other. If a little bend in that back knee helps you to keep those hips upright, keep a bend in that back knee. Often, if the, the leg is really reaching back, you can bring the, you can pull the pelvis forward if you have any sort of tension through that psoas so muscle there. So a little bend in the back knee. Now that we have the bottom part of our body sorted, keep that really strong. We're going to be concentrating on the upper part of the body, but just have an awareness that we're really grounding through our feet here. We're in a lunge, so the legs are working very strongly here. Inhale, reach the arms up, and then exhale, bend that front knee a little bit more, we're going into our back bend. Really open to the chest here. Let's take one more breath here. And then on your next inhale, reaching the arms up, let's straighten that leg actually helps us to get a little bit more fluid into the movement. Exhale, bending the knee, reaching the shoulders back. Feel those shoulder blades draw together on your back here now. The inhale, reaching, bending that front knee, press into your feet, press into both feet equally. Exhale, cactus arms, reaching the chest up towards the ceiling. One more time, inhale, reach the arms up here. And exhale, bending the knee. The inhale, reaching. Now remembering the sequence, we're going to bring our right hand to the back of that left hip, bending the front knee, reaching that left arm up and over to the back of the mat, to the right corner of the back of your mat. Inhale to reach, bend and straighten the front leg. Exhale, twisting to the side, the right side of your mat there, reaching the right arm back and the left arm forward. One more time, inhale, reaching. Exhale, hands either side of the front of your mat. And stepping it back to downward dog. We're going to come straight over to the second side leg. So inhale, lift that left leg. Exhale, step it just to the inside of your left hand. So you really want your, your legs quite wide on your mat here for lunges. And inhale to come up. Check that back leg now. Does you need a little bend in it to help you lift those hip bones up? Hug the hips to the midline. So how do we do that? is we squeeze our buttocks muscles, we hug everything in, we cinch our waist in 360 here, really holding everything together from the parts that aren't moving down. Inhale, reach the arms up, straighten that front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee, coming into cactus left side now. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bend, feel the chest opening, lift the sternum. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, bending that front knee. Feel your back coming into a lovely bow here. Inhale, reaching. And exhale, we are going to place the left hand now on the back of our right thigh. Reach the right arm up and over to the back right corner of your mat there. Or sorry, left corner of your mat. Breathing through that right side of your body. Feel the right lungs expanding and stretching. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, our last twist to the left now. Reach the left fingers to the back, the right fingers to the front of your mat. Inhale to reach. Exhale, hands either side of your front foot, 
and stepping it back to downward dog. Pedal the feet out, stay nice and still, do whatever suits you today. You can bend the knees, reach the hips up towards the ceiling. Always remembering though, just to bring a little bit of softness into the back of your neck there, let the head hang. Just stand through your body here. I know we're in a pose that requires muscle activity, but see can you make this a really soft downward dog. Just scanning through your body from your fingertips all the way to your toes and see is there anywhere that you're holding unnecessary tension beyond what is required of your muscles to hold you in this pose. We'll do one more small little standing flow before we come to the ground. So inhale, reach the right leg up, exhale, place it in the center of your mat now. Ground that left foot down, place right hand on right knee, circle the left arm up and over and find yourself in your warrior two. Press strongly through that back heel now and see can that help you to open that hip out to the side. So we're looking for the hips to be squared to the side of your mat now for these poses. Press into that big toe mound and circling the foot, not particularly physically circling, but the idea of spinning the foot out so that it helps to tuck that right, right buttocks under, make sure that that knee is stacking over the the right ankle there. Two feet really strongly pressing into the ground here. We're going to inhale coming into our reverse. Exhale into goddess. Inhale to warrior at the back of your mat now. So we're just flipping our feet to the back of your mat. Inhaling to reverse. Exhaling into goddess. Inhale to warrior. Exhale to reverse. Inhale to goddess. One more time on the left. Inhale, warrior. Exhale, reverse. Inhale to goddess. And then just coming forward to the front of your mat, stepping your feet forward. We're going to come into Malasana squash just before we take ourselves down towards the mat. Just feeling that nice opening through the hips. The back of the spine staying nice and long here. Feeling even in this pose, the strength that we have cultivated in our back bend. And then coming down towards the ground. And now just getting ready to take your um, restorative start part of your practice. So taking a few moments to get all your props ready around you, putting the socks on, making sure that you have your props nearby, putting on your, your cozy bits, your hoodies, having everything ready to go. So you're gonna use your props to completely support you here. If you find any little bit of the body that is hanging in space, you grab a blanket and you tuck it under. The props is what is, is kind of gently holding you in space. We're going to just come onto our backs now and take a constructive rest and just let all the muscles that have been working hard for you just start to release and kind of give in to the idea of, of um, relaxation and um, they now are finished their job. So come down onto your mat, arms either side of the body, knees knocked in towards each other, feet are mat distance apart here now. You have your palms facing up or facing down towards your mat, just whatever feels good for you. And just gently dropping into the restored part of your practice. Starting to feel the breath get a little bit gentler here. And can you trace the breath? Using your breath as your anchor. Feeling the lovely cool air on the inhale. With the, with the nostrils through the skin just inside the nostrils and coming down the back of your throat. And then the warm air, the air that has been touched by the inside of your lungs comes warm and then leaves the body warm. And the breath being 
the thing that really connects us to the world around us. So when we breathe, we bring the outside world into every single part of our body, in our cells. We become part of the world. And gently just rolling out to your right side to come up. When I set us up into our first restorative pose. Okay, so for this one, you are going to open your blanket out into a four fold. So basically, it is just the blanket folded in four. So get it into a four fold first. So actually, the blankets I use, you can get gorgeous yoga blankets, which are really supportive. But what I have is just four. Um, fleecy IKEA blankets. Now, there, sometimes I need to use more than we would usually use with the regular, um, with the proper yoga blanket, but I find these ones are great because you can just buy them in huge volumes. Okay, so now you have your four fold blanket. Just fold it in one more time in half so that you end up with a long blanket. Pop it along the top of your mat and you're going to fold or rolled up, roll up the bottom part of your blanket there. And just hold it in place until you make your way onto your back. And we're just going to take a gentle back bend here. So you're looking for the roll to hit just the base of your shoulder blades there. So you can see the shoulder blades there on my back if I'm not in your accurate position, but it's kind of for women around your brow line. But the way you know that you have the right position is that you place your roll in position or where you think is good position, it's a bit too high. And if you reach your arms out either side, there's about a two finger distance between your, your armpit there and your roll. And then you know that you have your roll in the correct position. And then we can bring our arm back into cactus position that we've been working on throughout our class, if that suits your shoulders. Or you can just have the arms extended either side of the body here. And lengthening the legs out. If this is a little bit too much on your lower back, then come into constructive rest for the legs. So the feet mat distance apart with the knees tucked in together. But for the, the pose um, that I'm demoing, I'm going to lengthen my legs out. So just feeling that lovely lift through the chest, then opening through the front body. And feel the gentle cascading of the upper chest down towards your neck as it sits above that little gentle roll that we have made. If you find it's too intense, just come up and unroll it a little bit. If you're finding that you're not feeling any sort of the back bend sensation, come up and roll it a little bit more. Just remembering this is your practice. The poses need to be exactly how they fit to your body. And always take your time to get into your poses. Because in these poses, we hold them for a little bit longer. So you have to make sure that you're very happy there. And remember to come back to the breath, to anchor you down. And this, again, is a great pose for you to help find the breath because we feel the deep expansion of the lungs on your inhale and the gentle contraction of the lungs on your exhale. The nourishing inhale and the replenishing exhale. Could be facing up or down. Up can be nice or more open. <coughs> pose and down can be nice if you feel you need a little bit more grounding into the pose. And just feel the difference in your shoulders there as well.
and some gentle replenishing restorative breaths there. Not particularly changing your breath anyway, but just observing the breath. Gently getting ready to come up, moving in whatever way feels good for you. It can be nice to bend the knees, rolling over to your right hand side to come off your blanket there, using your left arm to help lift you up into a seated position. So for our next fold, for our next pose, we are going to open your blanket back out now again to our fourth fold. So blanket folded in four. And we're going to bring it into a, an accordion fold. So just move back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So it's a four fold, and then we're going to fold it into three. And we end up with something like this. So it's a little bit of height. We're coming into a twist with the, lip, the hips ever so slightly lifted. So we're going to place the blanket along the center of your mat there and the whole length of your, your hip and, and your thigh, your upper thigh, is going to lie across the blanket here. We're going to place two of your other blankets just somewhere around the top of your mat there because we're going to bring the arms into cactus position in our twist, which can be quite a strong twist. So we want to make sure that we have blankets there to catch our shoulder if it's not comfortably coming down towards the ground. So I will come in to my right side first. So coming on to the whole length of your right hip all the way to your knee is lying on your blanket. And then I'm, my blanket's on my left side now. So gently using the strength of your arms to gently ease yourself down. I'm just making sure the hips feel just ever so lightly elevated there. If you have a spare blanket, it's nice to fold it in two and pop it in between your legs there. I find it takes the intensity off the stretch on the outside top hip there. We're going to open, bring the arms into cactus position, just in kind of uh, with the palms against each other. Leave the right arm on the ground there and roll the left arm open and place the blankets that you have to the left side of your mat underneath that left shoulder if you need it. I certainly do. So any amount of height just to help that left arm more comfortably sit on the ground there without taking you out of your twist. And now just when you are happy, that everything feels good, just feeling for the sensations of the breath again, and feeling the difference of the breath when you take it into a twist. Incredibly replenishing for the lungs. You may feel a little bit more challenging to take a strong, long breath here, but that's where the goodness of the twist is coming from. Notice what parts of the body are gently open there. Feel that stretch through the right side of the body and the left side of the body drawing towards itself. So the, the chest moving towards the left hip. And you soften that left shoulder. Check in with it, make sure it's still comfortable. Do you need to prop it a little bit more? I 
finding rest in the little bits of silence to your practice. Just getting ready now to move to the other side. It's probably the most energy efficient way to move to your other side is just bring the hands down each side of the body. Use, press your hands into the ground to gently lift your knees up. Shimmy your hip to the right side of that accordion fold blanket and then just let the knees drop down towards the blanket. So everything stays in place. You've still got your blanket between your legs. Then just pop your shoulder support blankets over to the right side now. Make sure you're happy there that your hip, your upper thigh and your knee is supported on that slight elevation of the blankets. Check that your blanket in between your knees if you have them there is still in place. Bring the hands just into cactus with each other. So close like prayer position. Leave that left arm down on the ground and gently open the right arm up, propping that right shoulder with any amount of blankets that you might need. Feel the lovely stretch now into your lungs. Taking it to a right side twist. Feel the two sensations between the right waist and the left waist. See, can you trace the breath now? Where do you see it? Where, where can you feel the rise and fall of the breath? Do you feel it a little a bit more in your belly now in the twist? Can you bring your breath down to your belly? Take a slightly deeper breath, make sure you're filling your lungs. The rib cage open and expand on your inhale and drawing back together on your exhale. Can you scan through your body and see is there anywhere that you're still holding remnants of tension? And just gently asking those muscles to just ease, using your exhale to help them to find a little bit of relaxation. Checking back in with that right shoulder now, making sure it's still comfortable. Push some more blankets underneath if it feels that it's hanging in space. Getting ready to come out of this pose now. Just wrap your head around the idea of moving before we even move. Best way to come out is just to lift that right arm up and bring it back over towards the left arm. Roll over to the left hand side. Press your right hand into the ground here and lift yourself up. So for our final pose, for a short shavasana. We are going to use three blankets and we're going to elevate the hips in, in a constructive rest. So take your blankets into four folds, all three of your blankets there. You have them all ready to fold. 
and then fold them one more time and roll them up. So you will end up with a roll about this size here. And pop it along top of your mat there or leaving space for your head. So you've got your four fold. Fold it one more time. It's really important that there's no creases, that you really take your time with your blankets. Roll it up nice and tight. So you want it to be nice and supportive and then pop it right beside that other blanket. One more blanket. The fourth fold, fold it again and then roll it up nice and tight. And pop it beside the other blankets. Have your final blanket if you have a fourth one either just beside you if you like to take the blanket over you in your poses for warmth or else pop it up at the top of your mat and roll the bottom part and take it into a neck roll. So that's where your head is going to be. Your neck will be supported by this. Our shoulders are going to come down here. We're going to have that two thumb distance between our little elevation and we're going to bring the hips into constructive rest. So just getting ready. Best way is probably just to place the hips down on your rolls. Use your hands to support you, make sure that bottom row is the row away. Oh, lovely. And then coming down, we're kind of shimmying the shoulders in between your neck roll, if you made one there, and your three rows. So you want to make sure that your hips, all the way from your hips to just that point under me, on the tip of your shoulder blades, two fingers away from your armpit there is supported on your rows. If this is a little bit too much on your back, you can maybe squish that bottom row up towards the other ones and let the lower back drop down a little bit. So there's a little bit of hang of your hips towards the ground there. Roll your neck roll under, making sure that it's not quite lifting your, your, your neck there, but it's certainly supporting the curve of your cervical spine. Arms can bring it into cactus position, which they've been in for a lot of the class, so hopefully the shoulders are feeling a little bit more ease now. Or they can be either side of the body or reached out either side of the body, either um, alongside the body or just stretched out in a T-shape, whatever suits your shoulders. Just remembering this is your practice and it really is about what feels most comfortable for you. The feet are mat distance apart and the knees are tucked, or, or the knees are knocked in together. So we've got constructive rest for the legs there. So coming into this gentle back bend. See if you can make a blueprint of how this lovely opening feels through the chest. So that you can carry this lovely stretched front body, this proud upright spine with you for the rest of your day. Using the breath again now, using it as your anchor to bring you back. The last few minutes of your practice are absolutely yours.
going through your body one last time, seeing if there anywhere that you can release. Seeing can you find any little bit of tension in the muscles of your face. Skin across your forehead softens. Muscles around your temples, eases. Your eyeballs drop down deeply into the sockets. Your jaw relaxes. Your tongue gently just brushing across the top of your palate. Really cultivating a smooth and steady exhale here. As the inhale oxygenates the body, the exhale soothes the body. Enjoying these last few moments of peace in your day. We're going to come into Shavasana now just to neutralize everything, come back down to the ground. So just bring your feet hip distance apart, lift your hips up, and then just gently. Release the rolls from your lower back and your and your pelvis there. So just pulling them out, placing the arms to the side of your body, and then just really slowly placing your vertebra down one at a time. Hands to the side of the body, palms facing up is lovely for shavasana. Lengthen the legs out. So lengthen the right leg out. Lift it up. Reach the toes away. Place it down. Lengthen the left leg out mindfully. Lift it up, reach the toes away, and place it down again. Let the pelvis become heavy in the support of the mat now. Feel the difference it feels in the spine now sitting down on the ground without your back bend. Really feel comfort in the support of the earth underneath you. all the muscles, all the soft tissue of your body thanking you for this time that you've given it. Bringing your awareness back into the room now. Maybe taking one or two slightly deeper breaths. 
Even with your eyes closed, feeling the space around you. Coming back really gently into your day. And taking your time, so whenever you are ready, bending the knees up. Rolling over to your right hand side, taking a breath there. Using your left arm to support you, bring yourself up into a comfortable cross leg position, hands in prayer position at your heart. Comes to your third eye, to your lips, to your heart center, namaste. Thank you for practicing with me. So as usual, if you have any questions on any part of the practice or there's a particular pose that you're struggling with, do send me an email. I'm happy to do a little individual Zoom with you to help you ease or work out any little, any little areas that you are, um, are finding tricky, particularly with something like an online recording or live. Um, you don't get the chance to, to actually um, ask the question like in the live class. So uh, thank you for asking. See you again next week.